Hi guys, welcome back to Girl Therapy. I'm your host, Nicole. Thank you guys for coming back this week. I'm so excited for this episode. Let's just jump right into some updates. I uh, just got back from Austin, Texas. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you probably saw that I was there. I was visiting my friend Caitlin for her 30th. That was really fun. I hadn't seen her in about three months since my birthday, actually, since my golden birthday, which was in March, I was there. April, May, June, July. Uh, wait, no, is that possible? Mar- it was basically April because it was end of March. Um, April, May, June, July. Yeah, so a couple months, but she's just one of those friends where when I see her, it's like no time has passed. We just pick up right where we left off and it's just such an easy friendship, just an easy, comfortable, safe friendship and we just have the best time. I want to address the fact that I think maybe it was, I guess almost two weeks ago at this point, maybe less than that. I posted a TikTok just saying that I needed some time because I was just dealing with something that made me really emotional and I had been really in my head and I just felt really out of touch with myself and I just, I'd never taken a week off, you know, in this entire social media career. I've posted pretty much every day, multiple times a day. I think there's only been one day in the last couple of years that I didn't post and it was unintentionally too. It was just like I was super busy and maybe I recorded something, but I couldn't post something. And I struggle a lot with feeling guilty for that, but I am human and I am allowed to rest and take space for myself. And I'm not saying you guys didn't allow me that space. I didn't allow myself that space. I really try to share my life with you guys. I mean, I do share my life with you guys. You guys have seen me through a lot of stuff. I have all the tools I feel really stable. I'm in a really happy place in my life. I have amazing friendships. And this was the one thing that I was just kind of like, I kind of put all my my love and like hope. I put a lot into this emotionally. When it didn't work out exactly the way I saw it going, it kind of defeated me. And I always say don't tie certain outcomes to things. I'm pretty sure I talked about that two episodes ago. That episode was also for me. I knew that I was tying an outcome to something because I was excited about it. When it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, it was really upsetting. And I'm an emotional girl. I have big emotions. I love really hard. I care a lot. Sometimes I take things too personally. And it just kind of like brought things to surface and I was like, (sighs) okay. So I kind of just let myself feel for the last you know week that I took off social media and thank you guys who supported me and sent me really sweet messages and it just kind of reminded me of like what an amazing community I have and that you guys are like take the time you know take what you need and I knew you guys would support me I usually put on a really strong face or I talk things through with you guys and we get through things together And I think you think sometimes, or I think maybe people think sometimes because you talk about something on the internet or you talk about something publicly or openly or really vulnerable, is that like you're really strong or that things are okay or that maybe it's not as a big of a deal. But a lot of the things that I talk about do hurt me and I am a person at the end of the day and I have to sit down and and I have to deal with those things. I haven't talked about it on any platform and I'm not planning on it. But I know you who listen to me here are my real ones and my biggest supporters and I lean on you guys the most and I know you guys lean on me too. So I just want you to know that it's okay to hurt, it's okay to feel things, it's okay to take time and it's not embarrassing and it's not a bad thing, it's just life. Coming back, you know, I didn't plan like a certain return, I was just like I'm gonna record when I feel like recording. When I was just kind of like, I want to say this like one little funny thing or whatever. And and that was kind of like my return. It was like a week later I posted on TikTok for the first time. And it felt good. Like TikTok's my job, right? And they say never bring your emotions or anything to your job. Well, I do that and I have to do that. (laughs) And that's kind of my brand. Um, But also like my job makes me really happy. And it hurt that I couldn't do my job well. And it hurt that because I'm not okay or because I'm not feeling well, or I'm not, you know, feeling like my best self, you guys will feel that through the screen. It's like we're both getting punished, and I hate that. And that's why it was really upsetting is that I couldn't even post because 
I was hurting and posting is usually what makes me happy and what brings out my creativity and what makes me feel fulfilled. So to not be able to do that was kind of like, oh, like it was just, it was hard. Um, It was definitely a much needed reset, but now coming back, it's kind of hard too. Cause now I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out now what I want my rebrand to be. Cause during that time that I took time off, I was also going through my old social media and my own videos and doing deep scrolls. And sometimes when you guys like some of my really old videos, I click on them. Cause I'm like, let me just watch this version of me or what this was just to relive this moment or see what I was going through. Because it reminds me how much I've grown and changed, especially in these times where I feel really lost and stagnant. It's helpful for me to go back and think, how much have I emotionally grown? This thing that I'm kind of processing now, I feel the most equipped and the best for. Like, I, I really am okay. I know, like, I could cry at any moment, but that's just when I talk about it regardless. Like, I am process- I am allowing myself to release and it's really important to do that. But I think it took me only about, like, a week and I'm still recovering, but, like, something like this would have taken me years, I think, in the past. I know I'm going to be okay and everything's working in my favor and everything's working out exactly how it's supposed to. And I feel really good that I have now church and, and God to lean on. And I have, I now started therapy. That's another update. So I have my therapist to lean on and I have a, a therapy session in one hour. I got to make sure I don't get off too much of a tangent on this episode. Yeah. Like I kind of was like, well, who am I? And I'm sure we all have those moments and you have those moments where you're like, who am I? Like sometimes I wake up and I'm just like, who do I want to be? Or who, what am I doing here? You know, like just these moments of, it's not even self-doubt. It's just kind of like, I feel like I'm a different person. I'm in a new phase. So I don't want to keep doing old things. And I want to make sure that I am growing and allowing myself the space to grow and not holding myself back. As I started to make my return to social media, if you want to say, I was just a little bit like, who, what do I want to post? Like, who do I want this new version of Nicole to be? Because I truly do feel so different. Now I'm almost six months into my, you know, golden year. Next year I turn 30 or in the, in the next seven months I turn 30, which is insane. And that is such a different jump I think like that the next decade of my life from who I was this previous decade of my life I can't even tell you the things that I was doing at 24 25 26 27 28 whatever so if you are that age just know that you have a lot of life to live and and if you are figuring out who you are that's normal if you don't know who you are that's normal if you're fail at trying things and failing that's normal if you kind of don't know where you fit in that's normal you will figure it out and you have time it's taken me you know almost 29 years of life to get to a point now where i'm just kind of like i'm growing into this new person and it's not to say that i regret who i was or hate who i was or I'm not proud of who I was. All those versions of me got me to where I am today. But I want to make sure that I'm surrounding myself with people and things and opportunities and places and all the stuff that supports the new version of me and not who I was back then. I don't want friends who bring me back to the past. I don't want friends who trigger or partners who trigger old habits or old routines or bad habits or bad routines or, bad, or versions of me that I don't identify as or like or, you know, serve me. So today's episode is going to be about rebranding. It's going to be about not changing who you are, but like change who you identify as, if that makes sense. Because I certainly don't identify as the same Nicole even two years ago I like I said like looking back at old videos that I used to post on TikTok yes those were fun yes that's what got me here yes that's maybe what got you here but that's not Nicole anymore and I can look at that content and think wow that content did really well or that content was really fun or crazy or this or that but I'm not proud of that content anymore I mean actually yeah to be honest I'm not proud of that content I looked at some of the stuff and I was like 
I would never want to post me doing this drunk, stupid stuff on the internet and for younger girls to look at that and think, that's okay. Yes, it's all in good fun. Yes, it's funny. But there are some videos where I'm drunk, even on my spam account, and I'm talking just gibberish. I don't even know what I'm saying. And even though it was entertaining and funny to post, I put myself back at that time when I was drinking and drunk and posting those TikToks. And I remember I was really unhappy. And I was posting not for with no purpose. And I remember after a lot of those old TikToks that I used to post of me like drunk or hungover or being like, I did this or I did that or just being like crazy, like making decisions that I knew weren't in my best interest. I just see like a really sad person. I see somebody who went home and cried. I see somebody who regretted heavily drinking or what she did. We all come from something. We all come from things that we've done that we're not thrilled about but that was me learning and growing that was my journey some of the content's really hard for me to look at because that's not who I am today so it a little bit makes me cringe hopefully you guys have also grown up with me but I don't think people will remember me for that I want people to remember me for my new version I want the rest of my life to trump to trump 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 <laughs> I want this new decade of my life to overshadow that old one. And as long as it does that, I'm okay. Throughout these years, I've had friends who've grown with me and have seen me change and have also changed themselves. And we've kind of grown into each other and support these new versions of each other, these new phases of life. I have a lot of friends going through new phases of life who are, the, who are getting married, who are pregnant, who are having kids, who are celebrating their 30s, who are moving into homes. It's amazing when you can grow through life with somebody and it's like remembering the times, like even just me and Caitlin, where we used to, you know, hotbox our cars and take shots before work at Peach Wave, which we did, and (laughs) just make all these silly drunk things. And then we can also still be best friends 30 years old and we're just laying by the pool having a sober birthday celebration it's really beautiful that we were able to grow and change and and kind of evolve together and then there's some people who don't and there's some friendships who didn't last me very long or last me throughout my lifetime or haven't phased with me and they've kind of phased out and that's okay too i've lost two people who were my best friends or I thought were my best friends and I see that they just didn't support this new version of me or they couldn't they weren't at a place where they were evolving or growing and they were gonna hold me back and I've accepted letting go of those things so that I can be the best version of myself letting go of things so that I can find new things and not clinging so tightly to things that weren't serving me or aren't serving me just because I have an ego. I've really loosened my grip on a lot of things. And if that means less people or if that means people might look at me weird or people might not accept me or people might not feel like they're as connected to me anymore because I don't want to partake in their gossip or their drama or their habits, that's okay. Because I find new people and I found new people who support a better version of me and support healthier habits and who are more like-minded and are going to get me through this next decade of my life. Me and Caitlin, you know, we used to be drunk party girls and now, you know, I've pretty much taken a new, taken on this lifestyle of sobriety and she doesn't drink really much at all either, but I've kind of just decided a couple days ago that I'm going to strive for at least a year of sobriety. And I've gone the last couple months completely sober. I think it's been about four months sober. And I haven't cared at all to have a drink. And I just started looking at alcohol like kind of a toxic friendship where I was like, why am I holding on to this thing that's not serving me or helping me grow or getting me to my goals or whatever? And I didn't make a big thing where like I was like oh I'm gonna go sober now I just kind of like 
started to and started just making decisions for a version of me that I wanted to be. And it became really easy to say no because I wasn't focused on being accepted by my peers or my friends or fitting in. I was just focused on me and and how I felt. And through that, you find the friends and the people who support you and just want you there and don't care to take from you or who are closed-minded or only accept a certain version of you. People who can accept the fact that people grow and change and people can have differences. And that doesn't mean that you can't be friends or that doesn't mean that one's better than the other. I don't think my friends who drink or whatever are, are worse people than me. You know, it's not like that. It's just I'm living this life for me and my friends want to see me the happiest, best version of myself. They always tell me that. They're like, I just want you to be happy. So I don't care like what that means for you as long as you're happy. Our friendship stays the same. Yeah, it was just really refreshing, you know, these last couple of weeks where I've been doing a lot of big celebrations with my friends, bachelorette parties, bridal showers, birthdays, yada, yada, yada. And it hasn't been centered around alcohol and it hasn't changed my experience. I think a lot of people think like, oh, celebrate, you need a drink in your hand. You need this, uh, you need this amount of energy, this, that. No, it's just... I'm there and my friends are just happy with me and who I am. And now I'm just kind of trying to figure out what do I, what's the content that I want to post? What's the version of me that I want you guys to see? Because I could show you any version of me that I want you to see, right? I could come on here and not share my emotions or not cry or put on this front or pretend that X, Y, and Z is going on in my life, but you really have no idea. You get to see the version that I allow you to see. You get to you get to see the videos that I want you to see. You get to see the photos that I want you to see, but really you have no idea what's going on in the background. That's never been my truth. I really try to be open and as honest as possible with you guys and make sure that I'm sharing a realistic lifestyle, balanced lifestyle, something that inspires you, something that's relatable, and I want to continue to do that. And I think in the past, I related to people who with the the drama and the dating stories, and those are really fun to share, but I realized I don't care for drama, and I don't care to entertain that stuff or welcome it more into my life or have that something that's normalized. I don't want my life to come across as chaotic. I think I used to think like that's what was fun and that's what hooked you guys, but I actually want you guys to see my life and think wow, that's really stable and really calm because I really want a calm and stable life. I want a life that isn't full of up and downs and isn't a roller coaster and isn't as dramatic and isn't as almost in a way angry or <sighs> regretful. I don't I don't want to live with regret. I don't want to live with any doubt. I think those are really low vibrational emotions and I am just trying to figure out right now who I am. I'm I'm really trying to figure out how to share my life with you guys in a different way this time. And I'm getting my yoga certification, so I think that's going to be a really fun journey where I can now teach you guys yoga and actually have a certification, but also bring you along the process of that as well, because I think that I'm going to discover a lot of things about myself. I think right now in this version of my life, I have a really deep want to connect more to my inner child and to learn. So I think it's going to be really amazing to be going back to school almost in a way where I am having to study and I get to learn about anatomy and, and health and, you know, stuff that it's going to come along with my yoga teacher training. And then also just connecting with my inner child more and really getting to this down to the root of the things that fulfill me and make me happy and not so much surface level things and not so much quick band-aid fixes like maybe alcohol or partying or surrounding myself with drama was. You know, it's so easy to, to get your mind off things when you are gossiping or you're focused on someone else's drama or whatever. I don't want to do that anymore. I've really, you know, really want to sit with my emotions or sit with the things that are going on in my life and focus on healing them and fixing them and growing from them and not distracting myself from them, which is why when I took that week off, I really just released my emotions for a week and I came out really strong. Like it was kind of crazy how it was like I took that week to regroup and then you know, eight days later, I was like, took a deep breath and I was like, oh, I think I got a lot of that out and I think I'm going to be okay. I know, I know, like I'm going to be okay. I'm going to just take it day by day. And I started to feel good again. And it really just took like a week of me 
releasing and um getting the emotions out so that i could think logically and i think a lot of the times i i let my emotions control and rule me and that's something that i'm really working on so when i was like how do i rebrand he's being annoying my first thing when i was like okay how do i rebrand because what does rebranding even mean you know like yeah i could sit here and be like i want to rebrand but how do i how does one rebrand how does one do that because there's gonna be people who are like when you try to rebrand or you start acting different or doing different things or have different interests or you're, you're you know dipping your toes in different things there's gonna be people who project onto you or are like wait what i thought you didn't like that and i hate when people are like oh i thought you weren't into that i didn't like that it's like i'm allowed to grow and i'm allowed to change and people who are kind of like what like confused by that are just people one who are scared and projecting onto you but people who are scared is this real scared to do that themselves and i don't think it's fair or good to have people in your life who don't give you the space to grow or change or be different or be open-minded so just know like when you do go to rebrand there's gonna be people who don't accept that or aren't as accepting of that and i have then i have something to say and you just have to stick to your guns and know that you're allowed to rebrand and that's completely normal and if you didn't change or rebrand or whatever that would be a little bit concerning i'd ask chat gbt gpt i thought it was gbt okay i asked them how do i rebrand so we're literally just gonna go through this together okay so the first step that chat gbt says to rebrand is self-reflection so i actually did talk about that so it says take time to assess your current identity what are your strengths weaknesses values and passions identify what aspects of yourself you want to change and what you want to retain journaling or meditating can be helpful in this stage okay my strengths i kind of just going to go through some of these really quickly my strengths is i think that i am extremely caring i think that i am really passionate um i think that i have a way of making people feel not alone and think that i'm really creative and i think i am really determined i think one of my strengths is i am really routines and i stick to my guns and i if i want something i go for it my weaknesses is that i do let my emotions rule me sometimes i do let imposter syndrome creep in i can get in my head a lot that's definitely my weakness is my own thoughts my own head i value strong friendships i value kindness i value respect and my passions i mean you guys know my passions my passion is yoga my passions i'm gonna start horseback riding again my passions are honestly photography i love that videography i love editing videos i do love makeup like i love all girly things those are definitely my passions my passions are the beach and food food's a passion i want to retain pretty much all those things besides my weaknesses obviously well i mean like my having emotions are a beautiful thing but (laughs) Sometimes I'm like, girl, we can't be crying every day. Like, I could just put on a sad song and cry. Like, I, I'm really good at reliving a memory if I want to. I'm really good at putting myself into a dark space and isolating. And, yeah, I sometimes I really like doing that, and that's not healthy. <laughs> okay, the next one. Define your brand. Once you've reflected on your current self, define the new you. What do you want to be known for? What message do you want to convey to others? Create a personal mission statement that encapsulates your goals and values serving as your guiding star during this transformation. So I think the new me is very, I'm more compassionate. I'm more, I'm really working on my patience. I am not the party girl that you guys used to know and love i really am not accepting of people who talk poorly about others or themselves i don't feed into drama and i don't care to gossip or to do things that don't align with my goals so obviously the new me being like more like obviously being sober that's a big 
thing. I think living in Miami, that's a tough pill to swallow for some of my friends. Not that anybody's giving me a tough time, but it's like we have to find new activities and new ways to hang out with each other and new ways to enjoy each other. I don't always want to just be, it's like, yes, I can go to a bar or club or, you know, a certain hangout and not drink, but let's find other ways to connect. Let's find other activities. There's so much more out there. Let's paint in a park. Let's go play top golf. Let's play a new sport together. Let's play volleyball. Things that like we're both enjoying together. And it's not just me having to compromise or make sacrifices because I'm not going to want to like sit around and sit at the bar all the time and watch you drink. That's not fun for me. So that's actually something that I'm also working on. I think I used, I tend to make a lot of compromises or sacrifices or try to fit people into my life. I would say like I stand up for myself, but sometimes I'm more inept or more, I'm okay with kind of going with the flow a little bit too much where it's like, okay, Nicole, you got to have a backbone or speak your piece on this. Or if something feels weird, say something. I'm really trying to work on that. So my personal mission and like who I want to be now is just somebody who is really kind, but also not as Bendy. I really want to be better with boundaries and come across as a really warm but also respectable person. I think sometimes people can mix up kindness and vulnerability with weakness and that person can be walked all over and that's not who I am. And sometimes I do allow people to get away with things that they shouldn't get away with because I'm thinking with my emotions or because I just, I don't know, or just because, you know, like sometimes it's just because. I really want to be known for, I really want to be known as a positive person and somebody who leads with love. I really want to push healthy habits. I want to push people to try things that they've never tried before, try new things, or I really want to make girls or people feel more confident whether that be through fitness, through what they're eating, through their makeup, through yoga, through Pilates, through the gym, through the workout clothes that they're wearing. So the next one is to set clear goals. With a new vision in mind, set specific and achievable goals that align with your rebranding effort, whether it's enhancing your skills, expanding your network, or adjusting your public persona. Having clear goals will keep you focused and motivated. This is actually so Yeah, that's a really good point is like you can say you want to do all these things and you want to be known for X, Y, and Z, but how are you going to get there? What goals are you going to have to get there? Because if you stay in the same routines and you stay around the same group of people, that's not going to get you to where you want to be and they're not going to support the new you or your new brand, you know? So for me, it was like, okay, yoga teacher training. I'm going on a Pilates retreat. I am suggesting more activities that me and my friends can do besides just the bar. I'm surrounding myself with people who actually now are, you know, also taking on a similar lifestyle, surrounding myself with more sober people or people who are just more aligned with me. And I find those people through doing the things that I want to do more. I can't even tell you the amount of people I've met through yoga and the amount of people I'm probably going to meet on this Pilates retreat. I'm going to meet some people who are just, you know, I would probably never run into here in Brickell. So I think it's expanding my network and making sure that I'm mingling with people who are like-minded as me or interested in the same things as me are going to just help me expand and grow in this aspect of my life like really just blossom into this next version of me those are definitely like some (laughs) achievable goals for me next one update your online persona update your online presence in today's digital world your social media presence is crucial update your social media profiles personal websites to reflect your new brand share content that aligns with your idea updated identity showcasing your expertise and interests. so if you see a shift in my content a little bit it's because i'm rebranding and it's because i'm sharing now what i want to share for me and i'm not just going to share things because that's what content that used to do well or that's how you guys know me as you're either going to grow with me and i'm going to gain a new following and a new community or you're just an unfollow me because you liked the old version of me or you don't like this new content that I'm posting and that's fine. It's all part of the rebrand process. You got to lose some people. You have to be willing to lose followers. You got to be willing to lose friendships that maybe you thought that you would never lose, but you're going to have to do that. 
And even just recently, like I think I used to post a lot of more like racy, scandalous things, more of like my body and bikinis and stuff. And but I went to the beach a couple weeks ago and I took some, you know, bikini pictures that were really cute and like some like body selfies. And I'm really proud of my body. But I was just kind of like, am I doing this for attention? Like it just doesn't feel the same anymore. I think I used to like post because it's like, yes, that's what makes me feel as confident, but I don't want to only feel confident when I'm showing off my body or when I'm getting attention from other people. Even if it's from you girls, it's not for the guys, but it's like, I don't know. It just something feels different about it where like, I don't want to show off my body as much anymore. I I just think like, I want my brand to be less about the external and more about the internal and I think that's actually what it is it's like I don't want people just to look at me and think oh she has perfect abs or how do I get those abs or how do I do this it's like let's focus on the lifestyle I want you guys to look and be like oh she looks like that because she does all this not I don't just want to showcase my body and then you guys think that it's unachievable I want you guys to know that you can live a balanced lifestyle and get to your goals and look however you want. You guys see all the food that I post, you know, like I show you me traveling. I show you me, you know, not at in the gym 24 seven anymore. <laughs> um, but I just live a pretty normal balanced life. And I would rather showcase that and show you guys, look, I'm just a normal girl and I can still look like that. I just don't want it to be so vanity focused. I'm really steering away from that because I want you guys to remember me for the things that I taught you or the things that you learned from me and not just from the photos that I post online. I I would rather you guys praise my hard work and see that than just praise my body, if that makes sense. It's like you're giving me credit for the wrong thing. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like, I'd much rather people give me compliments about my lifestyle and my routine than the exterior. That's kind of been like a big rebranding for me because I think I used to be like post, you know, show yourself off, which you should do if that's what you want to do. Like you work hard for your body, show it off. You absolutely deserve to do that. But for me, I think it was coming from a place of insecurity in the past where it was like I had to post those pictures to feel validated for myself and for you guys. And it's kind of like a little bit of a challenge to not post as many pictures of my exterior because I do work so hard for it and I do want to show it off. But that's not the overarching goal and that was never the goal. Yes, that could be motivating for you guys to go to the gym. You see that and you want to go to the gym. I don't want you to just be going to the gym because you want to look like me or you want abs. I want you to go to the gym just because I want you to feel good and just because you love yourself, not because you hate yourself or not because you want to look a certain way. So that's kind of like where my social media rebranding has kind of like taken its turn. Network and connect. So the next one says network and connect. Building new relationships is essential in your rebranding journey. Attending networking events, join professional groups, engaging with like-minded individuals. Surrounding yourself with a supportive community can help reinforce your new identity. Absolutely. You need people who support your new goals, your new visions, and are living the same or similar lifestyle as you. You can't expect to level up with people who are going to try to be holding you back or judging you or aren't just on the same level. You want people who are doing similar things as you, thinking similar to you, like-minded. You guys can support each other. You guys can share dreams and aspirations and people who inspire you and not people who you look at and you think, well, I don't like their lifestyle. If you don't like somebody's lifestyle, why are you hanging out with them? If you don't respect somebody, why are you hanging out with them? That's you not respecting yourself. That's you not respecting your own boundaries. I don't want to keep friends who I wouldn't seek advice from, who I don't look at them and think, wow, they're in a really healthy or successful X, Y, and Z. I'm not saying I have to seek advice from my friends who are only in successful relationships, but I want to seek advice from people who I can trust to to tell me, you know, kind of how it is, but also who, whose actions I respect, 
whose like brain I respect, who I've seen them handle situations or I've seen them go through life and I like the way that they go through life. And I want to seek advice from those people and not the people who I'm like, well, they're a little chaotic. They're a little crazy. They're this, they're that. That friend's really fun sometimes to kind of just like give you this irrational, crazy reaction or advice and be like, fuck that man or fuck this or you should do this or you should do that. It's like, that's kind of like the passion that I think is great sometimes, but that's not real rational advice and that's not who I am. I want somebody who's really level-headed and can share an opinion or a side or show something that I can be like, actually, yeah, reacting like that maybe wasn't my first response or wasn't what I was thinking, but that's actually a really rational response or that's actually something that I want to grow into or I want to, you know, see things from that perspective more so than how I was seeing them. So finding people who steer you in the right direction and like it says reinforce this new identity and kind of be like maybe that's what because there's gonna be times when I want to go back to old Nicole or revert to old ways but if you're surrounding yourself with people who kind of won't let you go back or look back or remind you of the new version that you're trying to be then that's better because they will never let me backtrack or let me go back to old habits or unhealthy habits because they want to see what's best for me. And if you're surrounding yourself with people who also have unhealthy habits or maybe don't want what's best for you, they're going to like encourage the bad behavior because it's going to bring you back down to them or their level or it's just comfortable. The next one, embrace continuous learning. Rebranding isn't a one-time event. It's a continuous process as is life. Stay open to learning and adapting, pursue new skills, take courses, seek feedback from others. I think that's good. Sometimes like when I am talking to my friends about things, I'm just kind of like, well, how would you do that? Or what did you think about the way I handled that? Or what would you think if I said this or that? Or, you know, I'm just kind of like asking people whose opinions I value and who have good values and a good moral compass to kind of give me feedback on how I'm acting or how I should act. Feedback is really important to growing and it's really hard to hear feedback sometimes, especially if it's not always positive, but as long as it's constructive and that's essential to learning and growing into the person that you want to be. And, you know, your new brand, this new version of you is going to have to take feedback because you're different and you're changing. Is this going to be like a continuous process? Um, This next decade of my life is going to be a complete different decade than my past life. It's crazy to think that in this new decade, when I turn 30 to 40 in six months, I'm going to be a parent, hopefully, maybe. You know, I'm going to be a wife, hopefully, maybe. That's crazy to think like that this next decade of my life is going to be so different And I have to be open to, I'm going to have to be open to learning and changing a lot. And yeah, I'm going to be like a completely different person. Maybe be okay with some failures and accept that I don't know everything, that I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes, but I'm going to be learning and growing and changing. (laughs) The next one, be patient and persistent. Lastly, remember that rebranding takes time. Be patient with yourself and stay persistent. Celebrate small milestones and don't be discouraged by setbacks. Your journey is unique and every step you take brings you closer to the person you aspire to be. Ain't that the truth? That was beautifully said. I think my biggest lesson that I'm learning, you know, in this last, this with things that I'm dealing with, but something that um, I'm really working on is patience and trusting the process. I am definitely a control freak. I try to control things as much as possible. And it really scares me when I'm not in control and when things don't go my way. And that makes me really anxious. And I'm really working on trusting that everything is going to be just fine because everything has been just fine and everything has always worked out. If I can control the outcome of a situation, I absolutely will. But there comes a point when it's out of my control and I just have to be patient And that is probably one of the hardest things for me in this new version of me. All of this is getting me to where I want to be and who I want to be. And it's not going to be immediate. I love immediate gratification, but it's not going to be immediate. In conclusion, ChatGBT says, 
Rebranding yourself is about embracing change and aligning your external persona with your internal identity by reflecting on your values, setting clear goals, and actively engaging. We can change internally. I could sit here and say, I want to be X, Y, and Z, but unless your external is changing, that's not going to happen. So you have to make sure that everything that's happening on the outside is reflecting how you're feeling or what's happening on the inside. Change first happens within. We all know that. And it's also, it's just going to be a mindset. Change happens from within. And I think when you take that on and when you really identify as that, things will naturally reflect back to you in the 3D, but it's going to take you maybe removing yourself from some situations or from some people or putting yourself into some situations or to some things to really make real, you know, movement, real changes and um, embrace your new identity. So I hope that this episode was interesting and helpful. This was definitely raw. I shared a lot about myself in this. It wasn't so much, I guess, advice, but more so me talking through my rebrand with you and hopefully it inspiring you. And I know that it was a little heavy at the beginning and maybe there wasn't a lot of direction as to where that was going, (laughs) but I felt like this is a little bit of my therapy session and I just kind of wanted to let you guys know where I was at because I know that I have the greatest support system in the world and I want you to know that I'm also here for you and we're just going through this life together. We're just growing through this life together and (laughs) life's not perfect. It's not always going to go your way, but sometimes your way is not the right way. You know, the path isn't always straight and it shouldn't be. And there's going to be a lot of twists and turns, but at the end of the day, you're going to come out on top. And I know you will because I'm going to come out on top and we're all going to come out on top and everything's going to be more perfect than you ever could have imagined in your delusional wildest dreams. (laughs) So, Um, I love you guys so much. I will see you back here next week on another episode of Girl Therapy. Please follow me and leave a five-star review. Uh, Follow me on Instagram at Nicole Doyon, TikTok, Nicole underscore Doyon, YouTube, Nicole Doyon, Snapchat, Nicole Doyon. Um, I hope everybody has a fabulous week and we will chat soon. Bye.